Let's take a look at the Fantastical for iOS settings. I'm going to tap on the Fantastical button in the upper left corner and then tap on settings. The first thing you see is your FlexiBits account. And if you're a subscriber, this is where you can see your account details. Uh, underneath that, we've got the calendars items, and this is where you can manage all of the calendars. I discussed this preference pane in some of the other videos in the series, but this is where you can add accounts by hitting the little plus button down here if you want. You can add calendar sets, uh, task lists, subscriptions, and even interesting calendars all from this place. You can also manage the preferences of individual calendars here. Next is the accounts tab. This is really important with Fantastical because Fantastical has a bunch of features that go beyond the normal calendar features. You need to have connected accounts to get these features, whether they be iCloud, Google, or Exchange. And this is where you add those. While in this window, I just wanted to take a minute to tap on this accounts from iOS button which gets you to this screen. Because Fantastical has so many advanced features that get beyond EventKit, you need to connect your iCloud, Exchange, and Google accounts directly to Fantastical to get all of those features. On iPhone and iPad, you can use the built-in EventKit support, and this is where you do it, but the only way to get all those advanced features is to have a connection to iCloud, Google, or Microsoft. So you premier subscribers that want to get all those advantages, go ahead and turn off the direct event connection in this screen and make sure to connect directly to iCloud, Google, or Microsoft. I've got separate videos on each one of those services to show you just how to do that. You can leave show reminders from iOS turned on. Now let's go back to the Fantastical settings. Next is the Appearance tab, and here you can set exactly how Fantastical will look in the light mode and dark mode. I covered this at greater length in the Custom Settings video. And you also have control over the app icon and badge, so if you want to change to a different icon, you can. And you can set exactly what the badge represents. The most common one people use is current date, so the badge on the icon will show you today's date. I'm going to change the icon to Fantastipal and have it show the current date. So I'll go ahead and exit. As you can see, it's the 19th and there's that cute little icon. I'll go back in and now just change it back to the default. The alerts and notification settings are extensive. You can set the specific sounds for different events. They have a bunch of included sounds you can choose from here. And I covered that also in the custom settings video. And you can also decide exactly what events and tasks can give you alerts through Fantastical through here. Time to leave is a good one. I keep that turned on. And my default transportation type is driving because I'm in Southern California and that's what we do here. You can also set default alerts and the birthday and anniversary reminders. Definitely turn that on. This has saved my bacon more than once. Fantastical will give you a message the day before if you've got a friend's birthday or anniversary coming up so you don't miss it. Next is the weather settings. You can turn the weather on or off here and you can also choose the location that it will look for weather. By default, it's going to choose the location wherever you're at or where the appointment is if it has an address. There's also settings for the widget and I did an entire video on the Fantastical widget in today's view. And if you've got an Apple Watch, you can control what Fantastical shows on the Apple Watch as well. Uh, the Fantastical Apple Watch is a really good implementation of a calendar on a watch, and I recommend using it if you've got the app. One of the features I really appreciate with the Apple Watch app is you can actually control what the behavior is if you tap on the Fantastical complication on any of your watch faces. And you can do that right here. There's also some new event defaults. You can choose the default duration and calendar for new events. Scrolling down a little further, there's a series of preferences concerning calendar views. You can choose what day of the week to start your calendar on. Uh, you can also start the week view on a specific date or use today's date. Actually, I usually prefer it to be today's date when I see it in week view. You can also choose which week you start the month view on, whether it's the first week of the month or the currently selected week. With the days per week button, you can 
choose how many days show up on the screen when you do it on the week view. On the iPad, you have even more options. You can get up to 14 days. And you can also set the start and end time for your days. If you want to limit the display to just show the date, start, and end hours, you can do that there. And if you want to highlight weekends, there's a button for that as well. If you need to track the calendar weeks, if you need to know which week of the year it is, you can turn that on right here. And you can also show multi-day events in the all day section. I actually like keeping that turned on. Next is a series of preferences concerning tasks. Here you can turn tasks on or off. And once they're on, you can show completed task, organized by list, and also set a default task list. In the day ticker, that scrolling list of events you have in most of the views in Fantastical, you can have it show you empty days or not with this switch right here. And in the list view, you can choose whether to show all events or only specific events, and you can show end times or not. Now let's take a look at the advanced features. By default, Fantastical will show the map locations for events with a location. I've got that turned on. I like having that feature. There are some instances where a numeric keyboard makes more sense with Fantastical. If you want that to be available to you, you throw this switch right here. Another default behavior in Fantastical is after you add a new event to take you back to today. I like it that way, but if you don't, you can turn that off. Uh, you can choose where links open in Fantastical. Safari is the default, but there's other browsers available. And likewise, you can choose where Fantastical opens map locations. The default is Apple Maps, but you can also go to Google Maps or Waze. There's a whole video on time zone support, but this is the screen where you can add default time zones if you need to or adjust them. There are also settings to combine identical events, show declined events, and show hidden events. Fantastical also supports text expander snippets. So if you want to use your text expander snippets in your calendar app, you just tap this button right here. And finally, there's a button to get help or learn more about Fantastical. One of the things that makes Fantastical so special is the inclusion of all these settings to let the user customize it to work exactly the way they want to. The next time you've got five minutes to kill, sit down with Fantastic Al, go through the settings and make it dance for you. <laughs>